Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. So we've updated to 0 0.16.4. I'm on an Intel Mac here. Um, and I wanted to talk about an update that the folks at JASP created to deal with missing values. So last year, uh, almost a like full year ago, let's see, when did this come out here? Uh, one year ago, 800 views. Ooh, wow, 800 views. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> okay. I uh, released a video telling you all about a uh, how JASP handles missing values. Okay. And so this missing value list has been around for a while. Um, and you can use their defaults, which are the first four here, N-A-N, N-A-N, lowercase, period, N-A, or what I had done in this video, which was in 999. And so I opened up a data set and there were a bunch of missing values. So I generated the um, here in an Excel file for the CSV that is related to this. And I put a bunch of 999s in there. And when I saved it, um, you know, uh, it updated and it put all of the 999s in there. So this is a crucial update for helping you out with that last step. Instead of having a uh, situation where you, you have to update missing values with 999s or whatever you've chosen, you can have JASP do this all by itself when you open up a program. So I'm going to go and open a um, recent file that I did, which is Bush Tucker Food. And um, it is a it is a data set about, um, you know, people's grossness levels or something like that related to eating gross food. So I'm going to open that. And here's the analysis for that. But let's get let's go to the data file. So there's no missing data in here. All right. But what I want to show you the change in here is by first going to the hamburger menu and then going down to preferences. So if we go to preferences, we open that and we go to data. You can see that there is a new um, organization for this. It's It's been updated. So I gotten I've gotten rid of um, all the other things, the missing value list. I just have nine 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 here. But I want to show you. Um, what I've added, this new thing, show missing values as. By default, it is blank. Missing values are to come in as blank cells. And honestly, I've mentioned this in that video that I just showed you for the JASP missing values and then a recent video that I did for Jamovi missing values. One thing that I tend to do is just leave these cells blank because one reason um, we might have missing values is if somebody just didn't write anything in for a particular question on a survey or a particular question on some sort of behavioral um, test or left a, an accuracy test, bl uh, left an item on an accuracy test blank. And so we got to count that as a, like, you know, not correct or whatever. Um, and so we might want to use some sort of imputation method where we um calculate what value needs to go in there like sort of you know imputation um, from the mean so you put some sort of calculated value in the missing cell for or that is based on the mean of that variable and then it puts that in there so it's not really um adding much information to the overall descriptive or inferential statistics that might be created there um, where you can use everybody in the analysis uh, as opposed to excluding them because they have a missing value. But let's say you have a huge data set and you have no idea uh, where your missing data values are. So you can use the missing value list feature here by you know saying that a missing value is represented by a string of nine or NAN or whatever you have it. Or you can just say missing values are going to be something like a blank cell, but it's hard to find blank cells. So I said, okay, a missing value is missing. 
okay, is, is just missing. So I'm going to go back to this data set and I am going to um, double click on it. Now it wants me to find the file, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to find the file that I created, which I just put on my desktop and it is got empty cells here. OK, um, and so I'm going to hit the save button just to clear it. And what it did was it those missing values. Actually, let me pull that up here. So I have an empty cell there, empty cell there, empty cell there and an empty cell there. Now those empty cells get a missing. Look at that. That is such a helpful way to do workflow just to to know where your missing values are. Now this is a very small data set, right? We have 8 cases and only 5 variables. So there aren't very many cells, right? This is 40 cells. And 4 of those values are missing. And of course, everyone's eyesight is different when we're looking at spreadsheets. And so if we just put a massive indicator, this is a missing cell, then you can then then it will tell you that this is missing with whatever you want it to say. So if I go back to the hamburger menu preferences and go back to data and missing there, there is no data value here. <laughs> I'm I'm so goofy. There it is. There's no data value here. And it interesting thing is it doesn't change the nature of these uh these uh variables here because if I go to descriptives and then just put them all in, right? It will tell me which how, how many are missing. It doesn't even count them. It doesn't say, "Oh, this is now a string variable because I just put a I put a random phrase in there." Uh, there is no data value here, right? It just said, hey, that's a missing value. There's a missing value there. Oh, kangaroo testicle. Such a great one. Uh, uh, no, no, you no YouTube. I am not doing anything wrong. Uh, so there's no missing value in that column. Uh, there's one there and there's one there for which you grub. I mean, this is a, it's a really simple thing, but imagine a uh, data file that is like 10 times bigger bigger than this or the same amount of variables but like instead of eight cases we have 500 cases and instead of you know eating a uh eating eating a celebrity <laughs> eating a celebrity um i think that's just the celebrity uh person i think that would just went from one up to eight um Instead of these four, you know, stick insect, kangaroo, testicle, fish eye, or witchy grub, we can find out how many things are missing. Again, this is an extra step that a lot of people don't make, um, and it really, it really just uh, depends on how you want to use this. But I think it's a great addition to uh, Jasp's handling of missing values. Again, we go up to the hamburger menu preferences data and there it is there for you and that is going to do it for this episode if you have any comments suggestions or feedback please leave that down below thank you for watching this quick update to an already existing feature in jasp thanks for watching bye